Hey friends. So today we're going to begin a two part note on solving equations. Now we have solved equations in other um, contexts. Um, we solved quadratic equations. Um, so we're familiar with the notion of when we say solve, we're looking for the value of X that's going to make it work. Okay, it's going to make the, the equation itself become a true statement. Uh, with radicals, the way we do that is often what happens is a variable is underneath the radical sign. It's part of the radicand, okay? Um, and so we have to get rid of the radical. Well, to get rid of a square root, you would want to square both sides. To get rid of a cube root, you'd want to cube both sides. The one kind of extra item with solving radical equations is you actually have to check your answer. We call that verification. You have to actually verify that uh, the answer that you got actually works in the equation. Sometimes it will and sometimes it won't. If it won't, it's called an extraneous root. Okay. Okay. So let's get going. First of all, what is an expression and what is an equation? Let's just compare and contrast those two things. So I'm just going to hide myself here for a sec. Um, radical expressions versus radical equations. So an example, maybe I have root x plus 5 root x, whereas with the radical equation, I have that equal sign right here, okay? Let me just put my ink on. Sorry, here I go. So I've got that equal sign. That's the important part of the radical equation, okay? I'm just going to bring myself back. Hi, I'm back. Okay, um, an expression doesn't have an equal sign. Um, an equation does have an equal sign. The expression cannot be solved, only simplified, whereas the equation can be solved. We can find that value for x that works. And then often um, we'll have variable restrictions for both of them, both uh, expressions and equations. We have to kind of think through those restrictions, okay? Okay, so what I'm just going to hide myself one more time. When solving uh, equations, we always do the inverse operation. The inverse operation is the thing that undoes what you're looking at. Okay, so if you are trying to undo addition, you subtract. If you are trying to undo multiplication, you divide. If you are trying to undo a square root, you take the square. And if you're trying to undo a cube root, you would take the cube of both sides. So to solve a radical equation, isolate the radical on one side of the equation, do the inverse operation to get rid of that radical, then solve for the variable and then check for extraneous roots, okay? And then we've already actually answered these guys at the bottom. The inverse operation of a square root is a square and the inverse operation of a cube root is a cube. So let's go through some examples together. Uh, the first one here is four root X equals 32. Now, like always, you want to think about restrictions first. We know that X has to be greater than or equal to zero there. So I'm going to start there. Okay. Now I want to get that root X all by itself. So I want to get rid of the four first. Well, what's the four doing to the root of X? I am multiplying it. So I'll divide it. Divide both sides by four. That's going to give me the root of X equals eight. Now I'm ready to get rid of the root. Um, and so I'm going to square both sides. Okay. So that's as simple as doing something like this. Just let me get my ink on here for a sec. It's like I'm taking this side here and squaring, and I'm taking this side here and squaring. When I square root, um, sorry, when I square the root of X, I just get X. And when I square eight, I get 64. So I'm left with a statement that reads X equals 64. Now, I have to verify that. I have to make sure it actually works. So I go back to the original equation and I plug in 64 into the original. Now, when you're doing a verification, you can't cross the equal sign. So you can't divide both sides by four here. That four has to stay right where it is. And you have to come up with a true statement without crossing the equal sign, okay? So I know that the root of 64 is eight. And then I know that four times eight is 32. So I get a statement that reads 32 equals 32. I have verified the answer is X equals 64. Okay. Awesome. Okay, let's try this guy. The root of X over six equals four. Now, 
the radical is already isolated. So all I have to do is square both sides. That's going to give me x over 6 equals 16. Don't forget to talk about restrictions. x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Then I just multiply both sides by 6, and I have x equals 96. Okay, now I need to verify that. So I go back to my original. I plug 96 in for x. 96 divided by 6 is 16. The root of 16 is 4. And so I have a statement that reads 4 equals 4. I'm good to go. The answer is x equals 96. Okay. All right. The cube root of x plus 2 equals 3. Now here, because it's a cube root, there's actually no restrictions. I can take the cube root of a negative, no problem. So I say x is a member of the reals. Now, in order to get rid of that cube root, I don't want to square it this time. This time I want to take both to the 3. So if I did this, that's what I would be doing right now. Okay, I'm taking both sides to the exponent of 3. That's going to leave me with x plus 2 on this side, and then 27 on the other side, and then I just subtract 2, and I'm left with x equals 25. Okay, x equals 25. So now I want to verify that. Plug 25 back in for x. 25 plus 2 is 27, and the cube root of 27 is in fact 3. Everything's good. 3 equals 3. My answer is x equals 25. All right. Last one for today. 6 times the cube root of x, again, uh, equals 12. Again, we're going to talk restrictions. Because it's a cube root, um, there are no restrictions. x is a member of the reals. Now I want to isolate for that guy. So I'm going to divide both sides by 6. And that's going to give me the cube root of x equals 2. Now here, I'll cube both sides. The cubed root of x cubed is just x. And then 2 cubed is 8. So I end up with a statement that reads x equals 8. And then I want to verify. Plugging 8 back into my original. So I end up with 6 times the cubed root of 8. I know the cubed root of 8 is 2. And then 6 times 2 is 12. So I end up with a statement that reads 12 equals 12. OK? Awesome. OK, so all of these worked. I haven't shown you any that don't work yet. I haven't actually shown you what an extraneous root would feel like. That'll be in part two when we talk tomorrow, OK? For now, this is where we're going to stop. So if you're my kid at school, I've given you a couple pages here to work through. Um, make sure you're going through each question uh, and that you're solid on what you're doing. And make sure you're checking with me if you're not solid on what you're doing. I want to help as much as possible. Okay, so keep asking lots of questions. And then I'll see you in the next video for part two, which is more of the same. We're just going to get a, a wee bit more complicated. Okay, we got this. All right, I'll see you then. Take care, guys.